Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itasaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. Well, guys, our first idea of the week is from Equinor, and they have developed a system and patented a system about trying to keep the offshore floating wind platforms stable in rough seas. And that technique involves uh, using the turbine blades to actually control the blade angle and the generator torque to counteract the motions of the seas to provide stability. There's a lot of rotating mass on a wind turbine, obviously, so the moment of inertia is there and it, it's kind of self-stabilizing to a point but the seas are massive and they're still going to cause the the floating platforms to bounce a little bit this is an interesting patent i always wonder about these systems what the effect is on the mechanical system on the rotating equipment does it start to wear on bearings does it cause problems further downstream when you try to actively control a turbine from swaying Phil, this one is interesting in terms of its approach. Is it's a relatively new patent, though, right? Yeah. So this this was just issued um, a couple weeks ago, um, and that's why we we tagged it um, because we're tracking you know new uh, patent publications and uh, application publications on a weekly basis. We've cataloged something like sixty thousand plus uh, at Intel Store at this point. Um, but this one stood out because, first of all, it's patents from, um, you know, owner operators and independent power producers are, are usually rare. Um, and it's the bigger companies that tend to get them if they get them at all. Uh, so the fact that Equinor actually made it a point to, to patent something uh, in general is, is noteworthy. The other thing I take from this is that they originally filed this uh, in 2019 uh, in the UK, um, and that was the uh, jurisdiction that they claimed the, the patent uh, priority filing in. The Highwind Scotland site um, was originally uh, commissioned and started producing power back in 2017. So the fact that they um, came up with this concept uh, and wanted to basically, I mean, Joel will be able to explain this in, in a bit more detail, but it's almost like they wanted to use the turbine as a giant gyro stabilizer on this floating platform. So some quick math here on what this looks like in the real world. Um, in the North Sea, the average wave period is about seven to nine seconds. So period of a wave is between crest to crest. So if we're talking about trying to counteract what a platform might do between a wave, you're talking seven to nine seconds from crest to crest, okay? And now you look at the, these larger turbines and you're looking at about the same RPM, six to nine RPM, something like this, six to 10 RPM. So you're talking, this, and what I'm trying to get to is, is if you're going to use a part of the turbine as an, act, an active part of the turbine to counteract some of this movement, that's a lot of cycles on whatever that motor may be. So if it's a pitch motor or, or a yaw motor moving and a pitch motor moving, you're going to be doing this for every, basically every revolution of that turbine. You're going to have to be moving stuff around. And if history shows us anything from some of the active pitch management turbines that we know of out in the field onshore, those motors don't fare too well in the long run. So my thought here is while this is a great concept, and I, and I don't know if it's been deployed and I don't know what to, if it has to what degree of success, that's a lot of moving and grooving for a lot of parts up tower um, when they could be looking at a different way to stabilize this thing. Our next idea is from Vestas. And this idea is a way to create a, the root end of a blade that's angled slightly. So when it connects to the hub, the, the blade has either a sweep angle back or it's coned angle forward. So it's a series of spacers that they can put into the tooling to create this a little bit of angularity to the the blade the i guess the concept phil is that you could customize the root angles uh to give you sweep or coning for each turbine for a specific location in the world and a wind farm to improve power output and maybe even durability but it does sound rather complex on the application of this technology 
Yeah, and it's it's interesting because the the this is one of these concepts that we talk about on Power Up here uh, from time to time. That that's a bit of an engineer's fantasy, I'll, I'll call it, um, where good idea and technologically feasible, not really a commercially viable solution to a, a potentially a technical problem and a challenge that exists. Um, reason being that, like you're saying, if you start developing site-specific designs, while that's good for energy uh, extraction uh, and, and can have a beneficial impact on AEP, it makes your operations and maintenance overly complex, particularly around sourcing uh, and storage of spare parts. Um, but this could be a step in, in a better direction if they could also find a way to make the root end uh, potentially a little more modular where it, it could be, um, you know, kind of swappable. Maybe, you know, it involves some of the shims and, and other um, kind of approaches that, that uh, have been proposed. Let's take O&M out of this and start a little bit earlier in the project phase to see if this thing is feasible. Uh, and right now I'm looking at financially feasible from a risk standpoint and from an insurance standpoint. Because right now as it sits in the marketplace, and I'm just talking in the U.S. because uh, that's what I've been doing with the last few weeks, is people looking for a blade. Hey, can you find this blade? Do you, do you know where these blades are? Can I get a set of blades here? Can I get one of these? Can I get one of those? Because I've got long lead times. I've got business interruption costs that are skyrocketing. I've got all kinds of things going on that are non, not conducive to uptime for turbines. And this is based on what we sit today as basic blades, right? A you name it blade should work from turbine to turbine. Of course, we know that they have to be matched for weights and bending root moments and all these different things, but it's hard enough to get those simple blades that are supposed to be manufactured in bulk uh, to go onto these turbines to keep them running. Uh, I don't think from a, if you talk to banks right now or, or larger financial institutions or the insurance side of things for risk wise, they're not going to want to take that risk on and they're not going to finance a project that has something like this built into it. That's my take. Our fun patent of the week is a fresh air breathing device for emergency building evacuations. And it's from a single inventor, and in response to some tragic hotel fires, the inventor uh, developed this breathing apparatus that's pretty simple and potentially life-saving. Uh, it uses a flexible tube that can be inserted through the toilet water trap at the bottom and access, quote-unquote, fresh air from the building's plumbing vent system. Uh, it includes optional charcoal filters, and I would option for that uh, because... Uh, you're just coming into raw sewage, essentially, on the other side. But there is breathable air there, and it can include like a, a mouthpiece, a snorkel mouthpiece, or even a full face mask. Now, I've only seen this invention in the movies. In the Kingsman movie, they have this scene play out early on where they have to you know, take a pipe and basically snorkel it through the toilet to breathe, to get through the exercise that they're doing. Uh the the only other thing that worries me about this, Phil, is I don't know if I want to be stuck to this toilet. I'd rather be getting the heck out of the building instead of trying to breathe sewer air. This is also, you know, like we just talked about with the Vestas patent, it's one of those things where, you know, it's a very specific thing. Like you're in a building that's on fire and maybe you can't get out, but somebody can get the ladder, you know, all the way up to where you're at. And so you need to just buy yourself some time. So your toilet snorkel is uh, is available for you uh, in, in that scenario. Um, but yeah, I mean, most people, they're not going to bust out their toilet snorkel uh, unless they just can't get out of a burning building in the first place. So I, I don't know what scenario I would need to, you know, utilize this in, but because I'm probably, if the building I'm in is on fire, I'm, I'm evacuating. I think there's a couple of things here. You have to, and I'm going to go back to focusing on operations. You got to make sure you get that hose first off all the way up and through the toilet water. So you're not sucking toilet water. And also, I don't think you want that hose on the other end to be touching the inside of the pipe in any which way, because then you might be sucking in something that is not nearly as friendly as water. Uh, and on the other side of things, I'm not a lawyer, right? And I will say that, I can say that pretty confidently. I am not a lawyer. But 
when they write in this patent that it is fresh air, I gotta say they should have used a different word for that because that doesn't hold a lot of weight for me legally. I'm not a lawyer or a plumber, but I know that's the truth.